Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, senhoras y senhores. Welcome to the Alago webinar with focus on some of the state-of-the-art analytical techniques applied to organic chemistry. My name is Alexandre Ferreira. I'm a petroleum chemist from Petrobras Research and Development Center, speaking from Rio de Janeiro. And I work at the geochemistry division, more specifically at the fluids technologies management for almost 20 years now. Uh, I'd like to thank the association for this invite to be the host for Dr. Cristiani's talk tonight. Our sponsors, SENS, Analytica, Thermo Fisher, and Faperge, and you for your audience. Uh, as you might know, the organizing committee for the 2020 Alago meeting had to cancel the event last year due to the COVID pandemic but came up with this idea of having a sequence of webinars inspired on a similar event organized by WENF, State University of Northern Rio de Janeiro, which was a success. And the idea was to bring together once again the members of the organic geochemistry community and testify some of the last developments from key research groups. Uh, I have to say a couple of words here. Don't forget to follow Alago on social media, so Facebook, Instagram, and the channel on YouTube. Very powerful tools nowadays in order to communicate. And please affiliate to the association. The link is located below this video. Uh, I'll say some words in Portuguese now for the Brazilian students and professionals. Pessoal, é, se, assim que vocês tiverem a oportunidade, se associem, a gente precisa do apoio de vocês financeiro mesmo, para que eventos como esse possam seguir acontecendo. Né? Depender de patrocínio é sempre muito complicado, então a gente faz esse apelo para que vocês realmente se associem e contribuam efetivamente para que a gente continue caminhando é, 100%. Back to English now. Uh, Alago aims to provide news in our field of knowledge and wants you all to be part of this community. The members want to hear your comments, suggestions, and demands. And the last two message, last but not least, don't miss the next webinar. It will be presented by Dr. Finn Stewart from Scottish University's Environmental Research Center. And he will be talking about the use of noble gases as tracers of the origin and history of hydrocarbons accumulations. Uh, well, let me finally introduce you to our speaker now. Her presentation is entitled Isolation and Enrichment of Geochemical Biomarkers in Crude Oils and Condensates for Compound-Specific Isotopic Analysis. Uh, she has her PhD in chemistry, 17 years of experience in analytical chemistry and organic geochemistry. Experiences include development and implementation of new technologies of hydrocarbons analysis in source rocks, oils, and derivatives. She worked with hydrocarbon biodegradation processes in marine sediments in 2004 and 2006, turned to analytical methodology, methodology development for environmental geochemistry analysis, Holocene sediments. In 2010, made her first postdoctoral research, working on the development of GCGC TOF MS as a new analytical tool for paleo environment reconstruction. In 2011, Professor Dr. Paul Philp from the University of Oklahoma, USA, invited her for a scholarly research position where she developed a method for isolation of geochemical biomarkers in oils and source rocks for compound-specific isotopic analysis, GCIRMS. Later, she worked at Petrobras, Brazil, from 2012 to 2019. And nowadays, she's a research visiting professor from Brazilian Petroleum Agency Human Resources, Resources Program at the Chemistry Institute from UFRJ, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. In total, reached eight, pub eight publications in peer-reviewed journals and over 30 participations and papers published in conference proceedings. Well, that's it. So please, uh, Dr. Cristiani, the floor is yours. Welcome to the webinar.
Alexandre, nosso participante, tem um problema na internet. Vou pedir para o pessoal segurar uns minutinhos. Beleza, conseguiu me ouvir? Sim, sim, estou te ouvindo. Everybody's listening to me. So, please, uh, let's wait a little bit because our speaker is having problems, issues with the internet connection. So, but I think in a couple of minutes she'll be back to join us. I hope everybody could listen to me. Ok, I think I'm back. Uh, Cristiane, do you hear us? Are you there? I see a beautiful... How do you say in English? Rainbow? Ok, she lost connection.
Mas vocês estão conseguindo? Alô? Deixane, can you hear us? Hello, I'm hearing. Can you hear me? My camera is not working. I don't know why I lost my connection, but I'm here. Maybe we can try to do without camera in just yeah, the presentation. Yeah. yeah, great idea. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. The floor is yours. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening to everyone. As Alexandre introduced me, my name is Christiane, and I'm a research visiting professor from Brazilian Petroleum Agency Human Resource Program. At first, I would like to thank the Alago for the invitation to contribute with this webinar, where I will be able to tell you a little about my previous experience with analytical geochemistry being more specific about the science of separation methods and compound analysis. Compound specific isotope analysis, CSIA, of biomarkers in oils is represented by the relatively low concentrations and poor resolution of these compounds on the gas chromatography isotope ratio mass spectrometer. Condensates display an even a bigger challenge due to their high maturity that generally results in even lower concentrations or possible absence of biomarkers. So I'm presenting a brief introduction on the methodologies involved on the enrichment and isolation of geochemical biomarkers. Excuse me, uh, Cristiani, your slides are not going. We are still no. seeing your title. Oh, okay, I didn't start yet. I'm just introducing myself. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. And I would like to, by the end of this presentation, you see that the combined methods I described here successfully isolated and concentrated the targeted biomarkers in oils and condensates. The proposed methods I'll show you, separate the esteroids and triterpenoids based on their molecular size. The delta-13C data could be obtained for 12 oil and condensate samples for individual biomarkers with good standard deviation and the method developed did not incur isotopic fractionation. In this presentation, we will discuss the topics. Why make compound-specific isotope analysis of biomarkers is useful? Why it's a, such a challenge to get this data? Previous studies, method development, results, and conclusions. I would like to start this talk with a question to all of you. How many techniques do you think are needed to measure the isotope ratio of individual biomarkers? Actually, only one, chromatography. Sometimes we forget the nature of chromatography is a technique to separate the components by connecting molecular motion through the continuous exchange of solute molecules between the two phases. The technique used for isolating and concentrate is chromatography. However, the method I developed include three main chromatography steps. Fractionation, isolation, and analysis. The first step, fractionation, is a column liquid chromatography method. The second one, the biomarker isolation step, the core of the method, the targeted compounds are isolated by liquid chromatography too. And the third step, analysis, is the gas chromatography and isotope ratio measure, the CSIA itself. Describing the methods briefly, pentane was used to precipitate the asphaltines, alumina liquid chromatography was then used to get the saturated hydrocarbons fraction, and then normal alkanes were removed by 5A molecular sieve liquid chromatography. Afterwards, 13X zeolite was used to concentrate triterpenes and tyreadduction to concentrate steranes, followed by 
geopermeation chromatography, GPC, and then gas chromatography, isotope ratio, mass spectrometry analysis. But actually, what are the advantages of compound-specific isotope analysis of biomarkers, such as this structure at the lower right side of the screen? To answer this question, I need to make an introduction about the importance of geochemical biomarkers for the oil industry. Biomarkers are compounds that preserve an identifiable structure of its biological precursor, being usually called as oil DNA. As a classical example, I can show here the hopane structure derived from the hopane polyol. Indeed, these compounds are known to be derived from lipids in a range of different organisms in the depositional environment of the source rock. And due to this traceability, they generate important information on maturity degree, organic input, depositional paleoenvironment, and have been widely used with success for oil-oil and oil source rock correlations. This information and correlations are then used to corroborate with the basin and petroleum system modeling. In addition, research has shown that parallel study of the structure and carbon stable isotope composition of biomarkers provides valuable genetic information. So imagine how much more powerful would this technique be if the isotopic signature of each biomarker could be determined. Biomarker isotopes provide a wealth of information that can be employed for a variety of use. To get an idea of the power of these methods, here I'll show you an example from the Brazilian margin, which shows two halfly similar one-on-one -on -one mass chromatograms. The chromatogram in the upper left corner shows an oil from Lula field, actually Tupi oil field from pre-South Santos Basin. And the one in the lower left corner is a typical marine derived oil from South Santos. On the right side of the figure, the same two chromatograms are colored based on the isotopic values of the biomarkers. Here, it's possible to see even with no much geochemical experience, that by including the isotopic data, it becomes very clear that the two oils are dramatically different. For the top sample, the delta 13C values are ranging around min minus 35 per mil. And for the bottom sample, the delta 13C values are ranging around minus 20 per mil. Because field size in the Brazilian margin are related to source, it's extremely important to recognize even small contributions from the most fertile source rocks. Compound-specific isotope analysis of biomarkers is extremely a powerful tool to improve oil correlations, recognize and deconvolute mixed source oils, to assess multiple organic matter sources that was far beyond the scope of any previous techniques, and to review insights into biota, biomarker precursors, and the positional environments that were previously unobtainable. But, with the exception of a few oils and extracts with unusually high biomarker concentrations, obtaining accurate biomarker isotope data from petroleum extracts has proven especially difficult. When we take a look to a mineral with a hand lens, the biomarker contents are near ubiquitous in oils, and especially condensates. The abundance of biomarkers in petroleum represents less than 1% by mass in its reservoir or source rock in very complex mixtures, usually hundreds of thousands of components. And an essential requirement for achieving accurate GCRRMS compound-specific isotope measures is peak resolution. Coelution, low concentration, and significant background interference can cause significant shifts in delta-13C values. For this reason, 
chemical separation and enrichment of biomarker concentrations are indispensable. An ideal protocol for CSIA should satisfy three requirements. One, to isolate the target compounds. Two, to be applicable to a range of samples. For example, oils with high and low biomarker concentration. And do not incur isotopic fractionation during the isolation of the individual biomarkers. Isotope fractionation is when the ratio of light to heavy isotopes in the target molecules changes with the method applied. In the early days of the development of organic analytical geochemistry, the classical wet chemical analytical methods were the only ones available. Nowadays, intensive research in analytical chemistry have led to development of rapid and accurate instrumental analytical methods with good detection capabilities. In the future, I envision one-step automated methods insert the crude oil sample and get the desired data directly. Some previous works methods have been applied for the biomarkers isolation for CSIA, including tyrolea clathuration, molecular sieving, preparative high-performance liquid chromatography, and geopermeation chromatography, GPC. Each method targets specific biomarkers and typically requires relatively high concentrations of biomarkers in the original sample. On all showed methods, the biomarkers were isolated by size exclusion techniques. So size exclusion techniques, including calculation, molecular sieve, and GPC, showed no measurable isotope fractionation. And because of this, they are a promising practice for isolating biomarker concentrates and subsequently analyzing them by GCRIMS. In 2011, when I was a student research at the University of Oklahoma, a method for isolating and concentrating terpenes in esterase biomarkers in oils and condensates was developed based on successive separation steps. Now we know why making CSIA of biomarkers is useful and why it's a, such a challenge to get this data. This flow chart represents the four main separation and isolation steps to get the rich biomarker fractions subjected to compound specific isotope analysis. In the following slides, I will describe each step. I would like to highlight an important note. For trustworthy results, all isolation steps were monitored by GCFID to check the peak signal intensity and GCMS for peak identification and to investigate, and to investigate possible coelutions of compounds via mass spectrum purity. First step is getting the saturated hydrocarbons from the oil sample. First, the asphaltene was precipitated from the crude oil with excess of pentane. Then, the maltene was loaded onto column, packed with activated alumina. And then, the saturated hydrocarbon fraction was eluted with hexane and concentrated in rotary evaporator. Second step is getting the branched and cyclic hydrocarbons using the molecular sieve high sieve 3000. The high sieve 3000 is a 5A type of molecular sieve. It means the channel size diameter are between 3 and 5 angstrom. They are used to keep the normal alkanes inside the channels while the branched and cyclic hydrocarbons are eluted. The concentrated saturated hydrocarbons was loaded onto column packed with activated high sieve 3000 molecular sieve. Enexane was used as mobile phase under appropriate pressure to elute the branching cyclics from the column. A dual permeation chromatography method was proposed to separate the steroids and triterpenoids based on their molecular size. 
The GPC separates molecules according to their site, eluting the large molecules first, followed by the smallest ones. A gypsy metal column, a gypsy column fructose with 15 angstrom per size and exclusion limit below 1000 Dalton was used. The parameters studied and the optimized conditions are listed here. The GPC chromatogram for the branch dissected hydrocarbons for, from a representative oil sample is shown on the left side of the figure. The refractive index detector was used to monitor the target compounds and the variable wave detector to monitor possible aromatic contamination. Note the small magnitude on the VWD, indicating the near absence of aromatics. In the absence of a chromatographic peak on the GPC, three quads were performed at defined retention times, and the fractions are called F1, F2, and F3 were collected in separate vials. The GCFID and the CMS were used to monitor the compound dilution and guide the retention time cuts. The GCFID gas chromatograms from the optimized collected fractions were shown here on the right. The higher molecular rate cyclic alkanes were better recovered between 12.3 and 13.9 minutes. The selection of the fractions was taken aiming the isolation of hopanes and esterines with the smallest amount of peak coelutions and interference from the unresolved complex mixture. It was possible to identify using the CMS technique that the major GCFID peaks on the second fraction are composed of esterines and hopanes. Esterines and hopanes look slower in the GPC than isoprenoids with the same caramel number. So this fraction was accepted as optimal for analysis. The method for isolation and concentration of biomarkers proposed was applied to 12 samples among oil and condensate, always in triplicate. The sample set was chosen to cover a wide range of concentration. A chart with 100 stack column illustrates the terpene concentrations for the analyzed samples. Samples with the smallest terpene amounts representing the condensates are located at the bottom from one to six. And going towards samples with relatively higher terpene amounts at the top from sample seven to 12. The same was done for the esterane content. The chart illustrates the distinct esterane concentration ranges for the analyzed samples. As example, I can highlight samples number one and six with the lowest levels and sample seven and 12 with the highest concentrations. Some optimized conditions for GCRMS are listed here. I would like to highlight the on-call injection mode to help increase the method limit of detection and the performance of the system that was tested twice a day by analyzing a mixture of the tiered annual canes with known delta 13C values. The delta 13C values were measured for all 12 oil samples. All samples were analyzed in triplicate and the values were only accepted for standard deviation below 0.5 per mil. Despite the good peak resolution for a variety of peaks, as can be seen here on the GCFID chromatogram, reliable values were only possible for the whole pain series, ranging from the whole pain 27, TS, and TM to the hopane with 32 carbon atoms. Trying to improve the method development 
for isolation and enrichment for triter pains and easter rains, new steps were added. To isolate tricyclic terpenes and hopanes, 13X zeolite was used as described by Chen in 2004. The 13X zeolite is a NAX type molecular sieve with 7.4 diameter long channels. The branched cyclic fraction, that is, after 5A molecular sieve treatment, was dissolved in pentane and mixed with zeolite for three hours for inclusion. After terpene inclusion, the zeolite was rinsed three times with pentane, and then isoctane was added to release the absorbed polycyclic terpenoids. The zeolite was mixed for one hour and this first hour of disruption was removed. This fraction was related to contain complex peaks and a small amount of terpenes. A fresh liquid of isoctane was added to the zeolite and mixed for additional 70 hours to extract the terpene rich fraction. The solvent was dried and the concentrate was analyzed on the GCFID and GCMS. To get the estuarine rich biomark fraction, the branched cyclic was dissolved in chloroform and then tyrea solution was added to it. The solution was heated in water bath slowly and allowed it to sit one to hours at room temperature before put in the fridge overnight. After ingrating the crystals, a washing step was carried out three times with exane. The crystal clathrate was solubilized with distilled water and a liquid liquid extraction with exane was performed three times. The organic phase was taken and the aqueous phase was dried with anhydrous sodium sulfate. The solvent was dried and the concentrate was analyzed on the GCFID and GCMS. Here, I show the FID gas chromatograms from the fractions for a representative oil with a middle range concentration. In the left upper corner, I have the complete chromatogram for the branching cyclic fraction, that is after treatment with 5A molecular sieve. And in the lower left corner after treatment with 13X zeolite. Note the remarkable increase in the intensity of the whole pain series. The same can be observed for Easter rains. In the upper right corner, I have a section of the FID gas chromatograms from the branch dissected fraction at the Easter rain elution time. And in the lower, I have the FID gas chromatogram after tyria clathrate step, highlighting the preferential concentration of estrogens. Despite the good quality results, a ramp of unresolved complex mixture is still noticed on the GC. So, what if I try to apply the previous optimized GPC methods to these concentrates, aiming to reduce the UCM noise? The GPC methods showed previously were applied to each one of these concentrates. This figure highlights the FID gas chromatograms for the terpenoids isolation step by step at the same stacked retention time. First, the branch and cycle fraction after alkane removal, later, after 13X zeolite treatment highlighting the pre-concentration and preferential isolation of hopane series. And lastly, the noise removal using GPC and final biomarker enrichment. Moreover, the hopanes, the tricyclic terpenes unseen until now, were detected with good signal quality, suitable to CSIA. And here, the figure shows the FID gas chromatograms highlighting the stearine isolation step by step at the same stacked retention time. First, the branched cyclic fraction after normal alkane removal on the stearine range, 
Later, after diarrhea clarification treatment, highlighting the identification of some steroids. And lastly, the noise removal and fine steroid enrichment suitable to compound specific isotope analysis. Here, I would like to highlight the peak coelution between the steroids alpha, beta, beta, R, and S with 28 carbon atoms. Due to this coelution, the delta 13C values for them were measured together, as we will see later. Terpene concentration recover using the 13X zeolite plus GPC methods was calculated. And despite the peaks were in a good scale on the GC, the recovery percentage was, in general ways, low. Unlike whole pains and tricyclic terpenes, the percentage recovered for esterines by tyria clarification plus GPC methods was in a good range, around 50%. It's important to highlight values above 100% for sample number 9. It reflects a typical coelution on the GC. Thus, further investigation must be done in this way. The delta 13C values for triterpenes were measured. Good results with standard deviation below 0.5 per mil were measured. Although the good peak resolution on the GCFID, the peak intensity on the GCRIMS was lower, even with on-column injection mode, and some compounds did not achieve the limits of detection as shown at the table. The delta 13 c values for Easter rains were measured with success as well, and better standard deviation when compared to the whole pens and tricyclic terpenes, 0.4 against 0.5 per mil. The, the delta 13 c values for the Easter rains alpha, beta, beta, R, and S with 28 carbon atoms were measured together, as I mentioned earlier. The delta 13C graphs were done, but no much could be told about the samples because the sample were because the samples were chosen in a randomic way, based only on the biomarker concentration contains with no geochemical connection. In the absence of identical standard for whole pains to validate and check if the method incurred on isotopic fractionation, the method was applied to a tar sand sample, poor in N and isoalkanes, and rich in whole paints. The delta 13C values were measured in triplicate on the rock extract, prior the method application, and in duplicate post-method submission. No isotopic fractionation was observed for the 13X zeolite plus GPC method, with standard deviation below 0.15. To validate the Tyria plus GPC method, authentic Easterine standards were used. The delta 13C values were measured in triplicate prior and post method application. No isotopic fractionation was observed with standard deviation below 0.11. Compare the isolation methods using only GPC with the ones combining GPC with zeolite and tyria clafuration. It's possible to observe the notable advantage of using 13X zeolite with GPC to get the tricyclic terpenes and tyria with GPC to get the Easterain series. Because of the loss of signal intensity observed for the homohopanes, the delta 13 c values for both methods were compared. When compared the delta 13 c for both methods, a significant value variation was observed, reaching values higher than 2.0 per mil for some compounds, highlighted here in red. Returning to FID gas chromatograms for GPC, it goes without saying the intense signal noise observed and the coelutions detected, making the conjugated methods the most suitable to accurate CSIA measurements. 
As I mentioned in the beginning of this presentation, the main conclusions at least are the combined methods described in this presentation successfully isolated and concentrated the target biomarkers in oils and condensates. The proposed methods separated esteroids and triterpenoids based on their molecular size. The Delta 13C data could be obtained for individual biomarkers with good standard deviations, and the method developed did not incur isotopic fractionation. I would like to thank Alago for the opportunity, the Brazilian Petroleum Agency Human Resource for the research visiting scholarship, and Professor Paul Philp and the University of Oklahoma for the development of this work. I leave here my contact for any further questions and take you to everyone. Excellent, Cristiani. Although we cannot see you, it was a very nice presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We have a couple of questions here. I have some of my own. So let's start with uh, a question from Vinicius Pereira, UFRJ. Congratulations on your talk. Did you work with a reference sample with known Delta 30, 13C values? Hi, Vinicius. Well, actually, we do not have a standard sample with the deuterated the, the biomarkers. So what I made was used, uh, as I showed in the presentation, a tar sand sample to validate the whole pains, because the tar sand sample was a sample with uh, no concentration of alkanes, any alkanes and isoalkanes, and the, the whole pain series was remarkable. And I used uh, standards for three Easter rings. Mm -hmm. And to validate the, the GCRRMS, I used the deuterium mixture with enalkanes, the mixture used, commonly used. Yeah, that, that would be my question. Is this the mixture okay. from Anna University? Yes, it is. Okay. It yeah. was not written, so I was I had this doubt. So last Yeah, yeah, it was the same. One yeah. <laughs> That's one question for you. <laughs> okay. Last is saying congrats, Christiane. Very nice talk. And Thank Professor you. Renato Carreiro. Carreira, sorry. Hi Renato. Hope you are doing okay. Uh he is asking, he's saying thanks for the talk. Is there any data of nitrogen isotopes, 15N, in these biomarkers. Hi, Renato. Thank you. So, no, I just measured the carbon isotopic data, just carbon. And actually analyzing samples by GCMS, I did not isolate any nitrogen sample because the first, the first isolation step is just to get desaturated. So I didn't work with the polar compounds. Yeah, that'll be my questions about uh, hydrogen isotopes. Uh, mm -hmm. You can have this possibility. I think it's easier. But uh, maybe the, the machine, the, the equipment from uh, Paul Philp, he doesn't have the, the detector for hydrogen. But that'll be interesting to, to measure for yeah, a number of reasons. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay, another one here, Barbara.
Hello everyone. We've been having problems with Alexandre now, but I'm gonna step in for him. Uh, I wanted to congratulate again, uh, Cristiane for her Thank presentation. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Andrea Luis. Uh, he wondered, uh, what's the future steps in your study? Well, this is a challenging question. <laughs> I think that we can improve this method uh, trying to get more compounds to analyze them because when we inject on the RMS, we just got a, a few few compounds, and this is one of these challenges. And another challenge for me that this is a thing that I would like to do is to use this technique in environmental samples, so we can identify the biological precursor by isotopic data as well. Very nice. Well, I think uh, we are through with questions today. I wanted to congratulate you and thank you again. Thank our audience for being here today. Uh, remind you once again to uh, affiliate to Alago, uh, register to the, our event to, to get our certificates and join us on our next talk which will be on this Thursday, uh, regarding the use of noble gases as tracers of origin and history of hydrocarbons accumulations by Dr. Finn Stewart. Thank you very much and good evening. Thank you, Silvio. Sorry about the camera. Bye-bye. <laughs>